whether for Oktoberfest or any time you're looking for an authentic German snack, this is the German beer cheese recipe. And I'm going to talk about the German pronunciation of the German word here for a second. So in German, it's called Obatsta. <laughs> Obatsta. It's uh, Bavarian and Bats basically means mud or something that's kind of like caked together and this is essentially the recipe so it's called abatsta it means that it's been caked together i'm going to show you how you can easily make it at home if you're new here on my channel welcome my name is anya i love sharing our simple heritage homemaking journey and also i love sharing a lot of simple authentic german recipes just like this one what we need for this is some brie or I'm using a camembert and as you can tell I went to Trader Joe's because I wanted to show you that you can get all the ingredients here in this country very easily. You want to find one that's very soft and that kind of drove my decision which one to buy because there were some other cheeses that weren't quite ripe. You want one that's really ripe. Then I have some of my homemade butter I have some cream cheese, I have a shallot, I have some paprika, I have the German spelling right here, and I have the beer because, you know, it's called beer cheese, some salt and pepper, and for garnish, I have some chives that I just picked from the garden. As always, the printable recipe will be in the box below this video, but I'm gonna talk about the ingredients here as I'm going. So this brie here, you can see that it has a rind. A lot of people actually cut the rind off. Now, I don't do that for two reasons. First of all, I like being frugal and I don't like to throw something out that's perfectly edible. And while I said perfectly edible, the rind is perfectly edible. So while I'm fighting with the saran wrap here. I don't know what else to tell you about this, but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't like to throw anything away except for the wrapper, of course. So I have a pretty big bowl. It's not the bowl that I will serve it in, but that's what I'm going to make it in. And I'm just quickly cutting the cheese in pieces here. And you can see that I have left it out before I made this recipe because I wanted everything to be room temperature so it's really soft. If you don't like the rind at all, you're not used to eating that, cut it off. It's just going to be as good. So we'll quickly do this. And this has about a 45% fat content this is not a recipe you want to eat when you're on a diet, but a lot of German recipes are not very diet friendly. Okay, so I'm going very, very liberal here. And then I have this piece of cream cheese and I'm just going to cut some wedges in here. You can even omit that step. Now, some recipes don't have the cream cheese. If you have everything else but not the cream cheese, you can still make it. My bowl may actually not big enough, but it's a bowl that you can see very easily. And then I have the butter here. Same thing. Just cutting it in pieces. If you've been following me for a while, you might have noticed that whenever I am doing a very typical German recipe, particularly Southern German recipes, I'm wearing this blouse. That's very Southern German. Now I'm gonna wash my hands really quick. Now I have this shallot. I find that I like shallots the best for this recipe because they don't have a very pungent taste. If you don't like raw onions, again, leave them out. You can also briefly soak, uh, sprinkle the onions with some salt. That will also take some of the sharp onion taste out of it. You can also use leeks or spring onions. 
So that's why I said I'm gonna talk about the ingredients as I go because this recipe is actually very flexible. Now, I will cut just some rings for the garnish before I continue. And also I like the slight pink color here because I think that's a very nice contrast. That should be enough. And now I'm just going to cut the shallot into very small pieces, into small dice. You want a very sharp knife. If your knife is sharp enough, it should cut an onion like it's an apple. Then, then you know that it's really sharp. And again, if you like the raw onions, my oldest son actually loves the raw onions and the crunch. You can cut these pieces a little bit bigger. If you don't like the raw onions so much, you can cut the pieces a little bit smaller. Or again, leave them out entirely. Even though it's a shallot, I can feel it in my eyes, my eyes tearing up. Maybe I should have cut the onions before I started recording, but oh well. see how we can do this in here we just basically mix everything together this is the bots part <laughs> it's very fun actually at some point you can add your teaspoon or so or a little bit more of the paprika I always like the color and I'm the queen of eyeballing so I don't like to measure but for this recipe you don't really need a lot of measurements you can and I can still feel the tears in my eyes here <laughs> you can totally eyeball the the ingredients and if you don't have enough of one ingredient you can totally improvise and use a little bit more of something else so even though these ingredients are pretty much at room temperature right now, they are very stiff still, but I'll help that in a moment. It's like a very fun recipe and something that kids might like. So here I have my beer and yes, for everybody who's watching it and says, oh, but that's not an authentic German beer. No, it is not. It is the Trader Joe's brand. And even though I'm not a big beer drinker, even though I'm German, I have to say that whenever I try this, I think this is actually really good. And I wanted to show you that you can get very inexpensive ingredients and this doesn't have to cost a lot. So because it's called beer cheese, we will add a little bit of this beer. If you don't like beer, if you want to make it for kids, you can always leave that out. And then we'll add some salt and some pepper. Okay, now this whole mixing together goes a little easier. I think the sound is really fun. That's your all that stuff. Now, if you like it a little softer than this, you can always add more beer. I like it not too soft. I like it a little on the stiffer side here. Some people say that it's best if you eat it fresh. I have experienced though that when I made this before, 
that I liked it the next day just as well because I felt like the flavors kind of developed a little bit overnight in the refrigerator. So again, this is one of those recipes where different people like different things and do different things. So now I want to transfer this into a nicer bowl. And actually I'm going to get a spoon. is a little garnish of chives. And then all we do is sprinkle this on top for a pop of color. And there you have it. So here's your Abatsda, your German beer cheese dip. And how do you serve it? The authentic way is to eat it with pretzels on the side and just one of my little pet peeves here no German eats pretzels with mustard so this is one way you can eat your pretzels it's typically served as an appetizer but it's rich enough that this could be your evening meal you can also use these little snack pretzels a lot of Germans like fresh radishes with them and that is your German cheese dip now, if you're looking for more authentic Oktoberfest recipes, I have actually gone ahead and created an entire playlist of authentic German recipes that would be great for your Oktoberfest celebration at home. And the playlist is right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.